A very good afternoon, Fan Zone. How are we today? We know what's at stake, but I am loving the fact. I think this is the busiest Fan Zone we have had all season. Give us a cheer. I need it louder than that. We've got a rock goodies in today, and we all know why. Give me another cheer. Brilliant. I know the support today is going to see everybody making as much noise as possible. Thank you so much. Without you, you know, we just appreciate everything you have done this season and you're going to give it one last go for us as well today. If you're watching at home, I hope we're bringing some of the atmosphere today. Actually, I thought it was going to feel a little more nervous, but it feels like we're confident, aren't we? That's what we want. Confidence today. Fantastic. We've got lots for you coming up in the fan zone. I just want to say a very quick hello. I met them earlier. Bob and Ryan have flown all the way from Florida for one day. For one game. They had to be here. They're in the fan zone today. I've lost them already because there's so many of you. But yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. And that just shows what Everton means to everyone, doesn't it? They've jumped on a plane from literally the other side of the world to be here for one game. And they're going straight back again. Fantastic. If you've travelled, give me a wave as well today. We'll come and meet you. Uh, I'll tell you in just a moment what we've got in the fan zone for you. But my friend Sarah Help and his pitch side. Let's cross to Sarah first of all. Thanks, Julia. Yes, we all know what a massive, massive day this is for the football club and what a massive game we have ahead. So to lead you towards that and try and keep your mind off it a little bit, we've got a great show lined up for you. Tommy Adele, the lead singer of the DMAs, is going to be joining us again. We'll have Claire Wheeler later in the show of Everton Women, who's going to be previewing, previewing this summer's World Cup, which is taking place in Australia and New Zealand. We'll have Mick King from Everton in the community, live music and so much more coming your way. So we hope that atmosphere is brilliant. I know it will be in the, uh, in the fan zone there. And let's bring it with us into the stadium at 4.30. Back to you, Julia. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Sarah. Already a cracking atmosphere in here. I'm loving it today. We're loving the sunshine as well. So thank you so much. I'll let you know what we've got coming up for you here inside the fan zone. We will bring you the team news as soon as Sean Dyche says we can tell you. I'm going to put it on the big screen for you here. And I want to hear some huge cheers for the lads as I read their names out very, very soon. We're going to learn a bit more about the Everton in the Community project called We Are These Streets. Find out as well what happened when Vitaly Mikolenko went to meet some of the volunteers from Emergency Ukraine. They're doing brilliant work supporting families who, of course, are living in the conflict right now. We'll have more music from Mason and Michael as well to keep you going. And higher or lower, it's our final competition of of this season. I'll be looking for some contestants. It's really easy if you want to take part. You can play on your own or in a team. It's either higher or lower. So you've got a 50-50 chance of being right and you'll win a stadium tour for two people here at Goodison Park as well. Uh, just a quick message for you as well. We, of course, sign up to lots of different projects with the Premier League and rules. Please stay off the pitch today. We have promised everyone, and you know, I'm sure you will listen to this, we don't want the club getting in any form of trouble, so make sure you stay off the pitch today. And on that note as well, no pyrotechnics. It is something the Premier League enforces. There are to be no pyrotechnics inside Goodison today. So thank you so much for that. Right, as well today, the Premier League always designates a game, and that's today's fixture to highlight the work going on with no room for racism. There is no room for racism in football or in life at all. Everton's doing lots of projects, as we know, to ensure that the players today will take the knee. And if you take a look at the big screen now, you can see what work the club's doing with no room for racism. What does it mean to take the knee? Let's discuss some home truths. Racism isn't a comfortable conversation. But racism hasn't gone away. Racism is a real problem. It's societal. It's blatant prejudice. It's more than just social media abuse. It's certainly bigger than football. And this here is much more than just a gesture. It's about recognising reality and demanding change. It's a symbol of pride, pride in identity, pride in using our platform for change. That's what it means for players to take the lead. So if you're a supporter, support this. 
Yeah, that's the work going on with no room for racism. Coming up soon in the fan zone, I'm going to bring you all the team news to so get ready to cheer the lads on because they can hear it inside Goodison, so they're going to hear you. Next, though, let's keep the party going inside the fan zone. Please welcome back to the stage, bringing you some music now, Mason and Michael. <laughs> Captured officially, that's the way it was Happened so naturally, I did not know it was love The next thing I felt was you holding me close What was I gonna do? I let myself go And now we're flying through the stars Hope this night will last forever I've been waiting for you It's been so long You just what I would do When I had your song Fill my heart with your bliss Gave you freedom You knew I could not resist I needed someone I Make my wish upon the star Hope this night will last forever No, oh, oh Loves me better and makes me happy and it makes me feel this way. Ain't nobody loves me better than you. I wait for the night to come and bring you to me. Can't believe I'm the one I was so lonely. Like no one could feel I must be dreaming I want this dream to be real I need this feeling I make my wish upon a star Hope this night will last forever No, oh, oh, oh Ain't nobody Loves me better Makes me happy it makes me feel this way Ain't nobody Loves me better than you First you put your arms around me Then you put your charms around me And I can't resist this sweet surrender no, my nights are warm and tender We stare into each other's eyes And what we see is no surprise And God, I'm feeling most with treasure And a love so deep we can love measure Loves me better, it makes me happy, it makes me feel this way. Is ain't nobody loves me better than you? Loves me better than you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Brilliant. We will have more music from Mason and Michael soon in the fan zone. I'm also going to bring you that team news very, very soon. Now, if you're into your music, you might have heard of the DMAs. They're obviously a cracking band from Australia. Uh, one of their band members, Tommy, is a huge Evertonian, uh, big Tim Cahill fan, as you would imagine. And he's with Sarah now, pitch side. So let's cross inside Goodison. Sarah? <laughs> Thanks, Julia, and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined again by Tommy O'Dell, the lead from DMAs, and he's, he's back for, with us for uh, your second time on the show here, Tommy. Was it Crystal Palace your first time, I believe? Yeah, yeah, Crystal Palace. We won 3-0, which was good. Um, 
Let's hope we can do the same today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. That's why we've got Tommy on today. We thought we'll bring him back for a, for a good look home. And, uh, no, but just talk to us about the DMAs and what you guys are up to. You've released the fourth studio album, yeah. And the Dreams, which is doing exceptionally well. What, what are you guys up to right now? Um, so we're currently on tour. Um, we played it live at Leeds Festival yesterday. That, that was cool. Um, we're playing with Cortinas at Heaton Park next week. Um, doing some acoustic gigs and yeah just enjoying being on the road again and performing the new tunes yeah incredible and if you haven't already got the album then you need to and it leads festival you know and playing with the courtineers and everything like that that's yeah. awesome so you've got a really really exciting summer lined up yeah we do um, I feel like if we can get over the line today I'll be able to enjoy <laughs> myself a bit more but um yeah yeah it should be good I feel you Tommy and I think you know every single Evertonian is kind of feeling the same this day has been building towards this and so kind of all we can focus on I to know, be honest I mean, I, we asked him about the band and I like I don't even think about it right now <laughs> but um yeah look uh I'm I'm I feel very privileged to be at Goodison Park today and um yeah so yeah well, we're, we're really glad to have you here, Tommy, because we know we all know what the team needs to do today. We know what we, what needs to happen. We don't know what the score will be. We don't know how it's going to go. Let's just do everything we can. And one thing we know is certain is that every single Evertonian that's in the stadium and that's not in the stadium will be giving everything, willing us to try and get us over that line. Won't yeah, we? yeah, for sure. Um, the atmosphere is going to be epic, so... Um yeah, let's just get the job done. Yes, <laughs> and I look forward to seeing your next gig after if, yeah, if yeah, we stayed cool. up. <laughs> Crowd surfing and everything. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. But, you know, recently as well, a few in the last few months, you actually did a gig at the Cavern Club, which yep. is, of course, one of the most iconic music uh, places you can play. And yep. you had Tom Davis there and Lucy Graham as well. Yeah. Of, 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 or I should say Lucy Hope, she's married now, of Everton Women. How was that for you? Oh, that was great. They're lovely people. Um, yeah, um, it was nice to have... Um, you know, nice to meet some footballers, and um, yeah, it's a beautiful venue, like so much history, and um, yeah, it was just good for me to chat to some footballers because I love, I love, um, I love the game, and yeah, I kind of, I find it um, more interesting sometimes to talk about soccer than than um, the music. So yeah, it was really nice. Amazing, and you know, I think there was a lot of mu mutual adoration there as well because uh, mutual mutual admiration, I should say. Tom Davis and, and Lucy Hope are both massive fans of the band as yeah, well. So that nice. must have been nice. Yeah, it was nice. Um, I felt like they had a really, really good night, and um, yeah, it was good. It's nice. It's nice to like mix, mix your two sort of favourite things, you know. So yeah, one hundred percent, and that's it. You know, you're obviously massive on on the football, and, and those guys are massively into their music as yeah. well. So it was a nice little, really, really nice thing to do. Um, but as you said, it's hard to think about much else at the moment other than what's to come. But um, how are you feeling? It's it's a strange one today, isn't it? Like I said, we know what needs to happen. Yeah. And we know that this place is going to be bouncing. But it, I think it's only normal that we have, given how much is riding on this, that we have yeah. a bit of nerves. Yeah, as I said, I, I do feel very privileged to be here at Goodison. And um, I know that we're moving stadium soon. So I guess I just got to soak up the atmosphere while I can because, you know, I live in Sydney, so I don't often get to come. Um, but, yeah, I think, we'll, I think we'll get the job done and... Um, yeah, look to the future. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, Tommy. Well, yeah. let's hope in a few hours' time that we're bouncing and that your gigs over the summer, you're feeling a lot happier and a lot more relaxed. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your time, mate. And Thank everybody, you. check out the DMAs, get the new album. They're awesome. Back to you, Julia. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Sarah, and thank you to Tommy as well. Yes, yeah, summing it up, isn't he? I'm, I'm being told I can bring you the team news in the next couple of minutes, so stay right there. Do not go anywhere. It's packed in the fan zone today. There nearly wasn't room for me, but I don't mind that. Would you like to come over and give me a bit of a score prediction? Also, I don't know, has anyone got any superstitions today? Is somebody here in some special pants or something? I don't know that you might want to do. What's your name? Come over here. William. And how old are you, William? Eight. You're eight. Do you have a favourite Everton player? All of them, whoever scores the winner today and keeps us up. I think we'll go with that, shall we? Uh, what do you think the score's going to be today? 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one to the Blues. Who do you think's going to... Yeah, give that a cheer. <laughs> Love that positivity. Who do you think might score? You're just not bothered as long as somebody scores. You don't know. Fanta I love your We Are Everton badge as well. That's absolutely brilliant. Would you guys like to give me a, a score prediction? Come on over here. Fantastic. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Archie. And uh, who do you think? What do you think is the score going to be today? Two nil. Two nil. I think two nil. We like that. Give that another cheer. Brilliant. Who do you think might score then? Uh, McNeil and Gray. 
Oh, yeah. McNeil. We're loving Dwight McNeil, aren't we? Is there a lot of love for Dwight McNeil in this fan zone? Give me a cheer. Who loves his tune as well? I've been playing it all week on my Alexa, that tune. Right, I'm being told I can give you the team news. Let's get behind the lads. Here we go. This is how Everton light up today. Number one, Jordan Pickford. Number two, James Tarkovsky. Number seven, Dwight McNeil. Number eight, Amadou Onana. Number 11, Damari Gray. Number 13, Yeri Mina. Number 16, Abdullahi Dekore. Number 17, Alex Iwobi. Number 27, Idrissa Garnage. Number 30, Connor Cody. And number 37, James Garner. All right, this is the substitutes. 15, Asmir Begovic. 31, Andy Lonigan. 4, Mason Holgate. 5, Michael Keane. 20, Neil Mope. 46, Sean McAllister. Number 50, Ellis Sims. And number 64, Reese Welsh. That is how Sean Dyche lines us up today for this final crucial game. All right, let's take a look at the visitors. Oh, we're getting in the pantomime spirit here today, aren't we? <laughs> number one, Mark Travers. Number five, Lloyd Kelly. Number seven, David Brooks. Number eight, Jefferson Lerma. Number nine, Dominic Solanke. Thought that might happen. Number 10, Ryan Christie. Number 11, Dango Utara. Number 15, Adam Smith. Number 25, Marcus Sanessi. Number 27, Ilya Zarbani. And number 29, Philip Billing. That is how Bournemouth will line up today. And the visiting bench is number 12, Darren Randolph. Number three, Jack Stevens. Number four, Lewis Cook. Number six, Chris Meppham. Number 17, Jack Stacey. Number 18, Matthias Finner. Number 21, Kiefer Moore. Number 32, Jaden Anthony. And number 49, Dominic Sade. That is how Bournemouth line up. Okay, so now we know the teams today. We are going to keep cranking up the atmosphere in the fan zone. So lots to come here. Sarah's got much more pitch side as well. If you're watching at home, cheering on the Blues. Of course, we're always really proud of the work that Everton in the community do. They kind of reach all parts of Merseyside, whether it's veterans, people who need just some support in life. Well, this is what's going on with the youth engagement work. And this is the project called We Are These Streets. What's happening, Kadeh? Gonna take you on a ride. Through the sights and sounds of L4 and L5. From Prince Rupert's Tower to Stanley Park. There's somewhere we go, one place that we know. A beacon of hope, somewhere to grow. You there with your mates. And you'll always find... Someone to greet you. With a warm, friendly cry. What's happening? Me bestie. Come here, lad. How are we? We come from different backgrounds. But here we are as one. A place that is open when other roads close. A place where everyone around here knows. We are, are these streets. This city to a tea. We come together. Everything in the community. Tuesday night sports night. Immortality awaits. A night to be bold. For your story to be told. And the spotlight shining. Your time has arrived. Teammates are formed. Friendships are forged. Under the brilliant white of the floodlights at night. You thought I'd be outside playing footy? Now nah, mates, I've swear that. We're at the digital skills lab. It's proper boss lad. And I'm on the pathway to my future. There's laser cutting and coding. Esports and VR. 3D printers and building blocks. Come and have a go there. The future is scary, but in time, I trust. The fourth industrial revolution is coming. This place is a must. It's a family club. A family affair. They put us on a pathway. To a future career. Now I'm working on site. I'm making things right. They got me into catering, <laughs> cooking and baking. For the Saturday crowd. My mum was dead proud. My story starts years ago. I was struggling, stuck. It was tough. Call it sofa surfing or hidden homeless. The invisible crisis hit me hardest. I needed a place, a home, a sanctuary. Somewhere to focus on me being me. That's where I found Everton as community. They took me in and found me a home. Sharing with housemates. Strangers at first. Lost souls, searching for better, not worse. 
And together we grew. Life skills instilled. Learned responsibility. Got ourselves sorted. Had your chippy tea. As for today, well, this is me. Not a bad little gaff, a place of my own. Wouldn't have happened without the people I've known. Here's a secret. I don't like school. I get why it's important. I'm not always here. But I struggled in class. Couldn't focus or relax. Running to catch up with the rest. Not able to give my best. Frustrated. Distracted. That's why I acted like I acted. But well, Tuesdays are different. We're with Everton then. People who know me get me. Don't mind me. And Alex's sounds. Alex's boss. It's all right, you know. Only sometimes gets cross. But there's no shouting, no screaming. Just understanding and caring. And we find ourselves learning about mental health and well-being. Staying safe online. Relationships and families. It's a proper good time. This family's forever. Better together. In this special place that we found. To excel as ourselves. To shout it out loud. And above all else, to belong and be proud. We are the future. We are this city. Standing in unity. What an incredible video that is. Absolutely love it. And I'm so delighted to be joined by Mick King now, who is the Sports Education and Development Manager with Everton in the community. Mick, thank you so much for joining us to start with. Um, that video is absolutely amazing. And I think it, it's different to some of the stuff we usually see. It's, it's very upbeat. It's very inspiring. I, I watch that and just feel... Yeah, inspired. What, what's, what's been going on this year and these incredible young people that well, you work with? That's just it. The beauty of this video is it was um, captured by, you know, for, from the kids, from yeah. our young people, from the young people who are working with every day, every day of the year, on various different programmes, whether you're in a, a primary school setting, education settings, whether you're going through the transition to secondary school, involved in them sort of programmes, or, or whether you, you need some support in the community as well. So it really got a really good slap sh snapshot of everything that we're doing in the community at the moment. And, yeah, it was from the voice of the, of, the, of the young people, so you're going to get that positive message, you're going to get what it feels like, what it's, what it's like to be part of having the community, and I think that really shone through. Oh, it did, and, you know, the city and everything, what it means to be in, from this area, and I just absolutely loved that video, and it was commissioned, wasn't it, last year, a special piece that's been Yes, done. we've had a bit of support from um, Darren, uh, Darren Jeffries and, the, and Ludovico, who've, who've put the, the, the video together for us, and re like I said, really captured what it means to be part of having the community, and how the young people feel yeah. and that's really nice to see um, that we're creating that environment that the young people can, can feel so they can develop and, and reach their potential and um, like I said no matter what sort of the program or where your background is and or how old you are you've got opportunities to, to uh, reach your potential with us. Absolutely well I was fortunate enough to host the first ever Breakthrough Awards for Everton in the community a few weeks ago and I've got to say the stories and, and things from these young people that are just so incredibly inspiring and a real strong representation of, of, of the hard work that you guys do you've got so many programs as well haven't you mick it's not it's not just sporting stuff either there's everything education everything no we, yeah we've got programs across the whole sort of life provision really yeah. so we've got a stay and play group um so they have parents and toddlers and then you've got everything in between up to you know our, our military veterans our social isolation program so i think the oldest participants is nearly 100 years of age so you've got the full lifespan wow. provision there that we cater for we provide opportunities for um developing knowledge skills providing opportunities and experiences for everything and everything really yeah it's incredible Everton in the community i think all of us Evertonians, it's something that we're so proud of and we're so lucky to have you guys and doing the hard work that you're doing. And just for anybody that's watching this that wants to get involved with any of these programmes, you want to tell them how they can do that? Yeah, just, just reach out, really. It's, 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 we're, we're, you know, we've got a few sites on the Goodison campus now yeah. um, across the community hub, the Blue Base, the, the Free School next door. We've got the People's Place now as well. So Which is anyone, incredible. Yeah, amazing facilities that we've got on the doorstep of Goodison Park. So yes. um, any anyone wants to get involved whether through volunteering or wants to access the programs then come and come and find us come and see us and we'll be more than happy to help absolutely as i say just commend you for all the incredible work that you do mick and you know just quickly on this game here today the atmosphere is starting to build now isn't it and it's it's a massive one it would be huge for us if we could get that win today wouldn't it and just get just get us over the line yeah absolutely i mean you've seen the, the fans outside now 
big groups. You know, everyone's here. You know, wants to see us win and wants to see us stay in the league. And you know, that's that's the most important thing for today. Let's hope so, Mick. Listen, thank you for all the hard, incredible work that you do with Thanks Everton in the community. And to anyone who wants to get involved, you know what to do. Up the toffees and the back toffees. to you in the fan zone. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Always a pleasure talking to Mick King from Everton in the community there. Groundbreaking stuff. Exceptional. And I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Bruce Silverman, who is the Univision play-by-play -play commentator. Absolute legend. You've been in the business for 35 <laughs> years. And you're here today. Your yes. first ever time at Goodison Park. Massive blue. How are you feeling, Bruce, if you can try and even put that into words right now? Uh, you know what? 35-year-old broadcaster and I'm nearly speechless. <laughs> uh, this is, I have had goosebumps since I walked into the building. This has been a dream come true for me for so many years. I went to Yankee Stadium when I was five years old, 50 years ago. That was a cool feeling, but there's nothing like this. This to me is, is the mecca. Uh, of, of football and as an Evertonian from the U.S., uh, I, I can't even begin to really put into words how, I mean, look, I, I mean, you just look at these grounds, this pitch. I've never seen a pitch this beautiful in the U.S. in my life. I wanted to make it here to Goodison before the new building was built, to, to be here on Decision Day. Um, a little nerve-wracking, I will admit. <laughs> I, I would have preferred to have gotten here knowing that we were above the line, but, but to be here, I, I, it is a thrill, and thank you. Sarah for having me. Oh Bruce, it's a pleasure to have you here. You know, as, as someone who's been a broadcaster for 35 years, I can look at you and think I'd, I'd love to be able to say the same in, you know, however long I've been in, in 30 years time, I'd be absolutely honoured and the fact this is your first time, only your second ever time in England, you're yes. here with your wife today as well, like it must just feel incredible and with this game, with everything that's riding on this game, it's, it's so important. The atmosphere here today, if, you, if you're feeling so overwhelmed now, how do you think you'll feel when there's near enough 40,000 Evertonians in this place with flags screaming at the top of their lungs to try and will this team over the line? It has been so incredible, you know, first in London and, and then here in Liverpool. Uh, the people have been so incredibly friendly Coming to Liverpool, there's just a different energy. This is my kind of city. Whoa! Oh, I see. He loves it that much. He's that like, excited for the I, game. Really. Yeah. <laughs> that, that might have been the pine I had before I came in. I've been in the window. But the, the excitement and the people are just so friendly. Even the Reds fans. I, I mean, I'll give it to them. They're not the same. But <laughs> the, the reality of it is, is that there's just a very special feeling uh, around Everton and around this club. And I was told there's always a great atmosphere but that this place was going to be absolutely rocking because of what's on the line today and, and and what's at stake and as a guy who just spent a lot of pounds buying a lot of gear to take home um I want us to stay in the EPL. I want the Mercy Sard Derby to to stay intact. That's what I said to the cab driver on the way over. She was a red. She was a red, and, yeah. And I said, look, I said, you guys want us to stay up because you want the Mercy Merseyside Derby to stay intact. And she said, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, this... On a day like this, um, the the weather, I, I know the weather's not always this good here in Liverpool, but, but this is brilliant, brilliant weather. And, and this is, I mean, it's 63, what is that, like 18? I think about more or less, yeah. So yeah. 63 it's degrees mm -hmm. is, is perfect football weather anywhere. Um, but but to see this and to have this as my very first match here at Goodison, um, I can't wait for it. To be able to talk about it, I had no idea that, that I was even going to have an opportunity to, to talk about this experience. Um, th this is amazing. You tell me. You, you live here. You <laughs> live do. here. Does it get any better than this? I mean, well, <laughs> it will be a lot better, I think, in a few hours, won't it? Hey. If, if Listen, if the job gets done today, which we all are hoping and praying, but this is is it's a dream being able to come here and and work here and and just be in this incredible beautiful historic stadium and well i'll tell you this because i think we have a similar um story to tell mm -hmm. i grew up in fort lauderdale yeah 1977 june 8 1977 i went to see the fort lauderdale strikers play the new york cosmos pele beckenbauer 
Canalia, all score, three nothing win. Wow. For the Cosmos, that was my very first football game, and then 38 years later, or 35 years later. I was the voice of those Fort Lauderdale strikers. Wow. So for me, that was my hometown. I had the honor and the privilege of being their voice for three years. Very similar to you living here in, in, in Everton and Goodison and, and now working for the club. So very similar. And, um, and I think that the lads from, from, from Lauderdale, very similar to the lads from Liverpool. And we had some great English uh, people playing for the strikers back then. Ron Newman was the manager, and Gordy Best, and uh, no, not Gordy Best. I just Georgie. mixed that up. <laughs> Georgie Best and and uh, Gordon Banks. Wow. And and Ray Hudson and and so many other legendary footballers came over to the United States in the 70s and 80s. Um, it, it really is tremendous, and it was an honor to, to to call games for the Strikers, and such an honor to to be here with you today in this magnificent, magnificent mecca of football. Well, Bruce, I could speak to you all day. I think you're absolutely brilliant. And I'd love to do a game with you on time, commentate. Hey, when come I'm to the States the anytime, States. I'll arrange it. Absolutely. You, you get me, you get, I want to be the English broadcaster yep. that calls Everton games. You can come over and you can call any game you want with me in the States. How's that? Deal. Deal. Let's do it. Awesome. Brilliant. All right. Go Toffees. Go Toffees. Back to you guys in the fan zone. Come on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah. I think Sarah's blagged a, a bit of a trip there, hasn't she, to America? And Bruce, wow, he was just absolutely fantastic. Made me a bit emotional there, the way he was talking just about, you know, how he felt about goodies and seeing it. And yeah, it's just beautiful here today. And we all know what we've got to do. We've got to play our part to help the lads today. Uh, coming up, we've got higher or lower. We'll also find out what happened when Vitaly Mikhalenko went to meet people who were volunteering and taking over much needed equipment to the Ukraine. First, though, let's get some more music now in the fan zone in the sunshine. Please welcome back Mason and Michael. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, I don't know why I came here tonight I got this feeling that something is right I'm so scared in case I fall off my chair And I'm wondering how I'll get down the stairs and Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right Here I am stuck in the middle with you Yes, I'm stuck in the middle with you And I'm wondering what it is I should do it's so hard to keep this smile on my face Losing control, yeah, I'm all over the place And clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right Here I am, stuck in the middle with you Oh, well, you started out with nothing Round of your myself, made man Well, then your friends, they all come crawling Slap you on the back and say, please Well, I'm trying to make some sense of it all But I see it makes no sense at all Is it cool to go to sleep on the floor? Cause I don't think I can take any more And clouds to the left of me Jokers to the right Here I am stuck in the middle with you Oh, well, you started out with nothing And proud of your self made man Bestie, you'll come crawling, slap you on the back and say, Please, please. Well, I don't know why I came here tonight. I got this feeling that something is right. I'm so scared in case you fall off my chair. But I'm wondering how I'll get down the stairs and Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right Here I am stuck in the middle with you Oh, well, you started out with nothing And proud of you, myself, baby Well, and your friends, they 
don't come crawling Slap you on the back and say please I got this feeling that something is right I'm so scared in case I fall off my chair And I'm wondering how I'll get down the stairs The clowns to the left of me Don't kiss to the right Here I am stuck in the middle with you Yes, I'm stuck in the middle with you Stuck in the middle with you Here I'm stuck in the middle with you Thank you very much. Brilliant, Mason and Michael. They give them another cheer, fam zone. Thank you so much. Right, coming up very soon, we've got higher or lower. It's a chance to win a stadium tour for two people. I've got my contestants lined up, ready to go. And even if they don't win, do you know what? I'll give you a match day program as well. So you're not going to leave empty handed. What's not a lot to like there? Uh, now, you might have seen, you might have heard about uh, Emergency Ukraine. It is a charity that delivers much needed items to people living in the conflict. Well, Vitaly Mikolenko went along to find out a bit more. Yeah, brilliant work there going on by Emergency Ukraine. And that's what happened at Finch Farm when Vitaly Mikolenko met some of the people that are volunteering for the charity, doing brilliant work. Right, we have just got time now for higher or lower ahead of the game. And I've got two teams ready to play. So let's find out who's team number one. Ollie. Archie. Ollie and Archie, and uh, yeah, are you both feeling quite confident today? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, you've already predicted 2-0. For some reason, I keep thinking 2-0. I woke up this morning and I thought, 2-0. We will take that one week. Team number two, what's your names? Lucas. I'm Sam. And are you feeling confident as well today in the sunshine? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Go on then, give me a quick score prediction. 3-1. 3-1, we would take that. We would take anything. Three points and the job done. Fantastic. I love it. Okay, this is higher or lower. Really easy. We're going to show you some giant cards on the big screen here. And you just tell me if the next one is higher or lower. And Fanzone, you ready to help the lads out? They will play along too. You can play along if you're watching on Everton Live. Here we go. This is higher or lower. Okay, Ollie and Arch, you're going to go first. So the category is substitute appearances in one single season. Okay, so that's quite tricky. So Joe Max Moore was 16 appearances. What about Jermaine Beckford? Higher or lower fan zone? Help the lads out. They're saying higher, these are saying lower. I have a funny feeling the fan zone today are just going to be of no use to you. So it's up to you. <laughs> what do you think, lads? Higher or lower for Jermaine Beckford? Uh, higher. You're saying higher than 16. Let's see if we can get you a point on the board. It is. You've got a point on the board. 21 substitute appearances. All right. Big dunk. Duncan Ferguson, what we saying in a single season, remember? So what we saying, fan zone, higher or lower? Oh, a lot of saying lower, but it's up to you guys. What do you think? I think lower. You think lower? Okay, is it lower than 21? Let's have a look. Oh, that surprised me, that. 29. 
Not to worry, you've still got plenty of cards left to come. All right, Tom Davis. What do we think, fan zone? Higher or lower for Tom? Okay, a lot of saying lower, but again, up to you. What do you want to say? Lower. You're saying lower. Let's see, is it lower than 29? It is 17. You've got another point on the board. Okay, your next card, Brian Oviedo. What do we think, fan zone? Higher or lower? That's a tricky one, that. What are we saying? Higher or lower? They're saying lower. I think, think most are saying lower. I think there's one higher over there. <laughs> are you saying higher to everything? Yes, lovely. Are you just saying higher to me? Hi, hello. <laughs> okay, what are you going to say? Lower. You're saying lower than 17. Let's have a look for Brian Oviedo. Oh, close, and it is just lower. You've got three points on the board. DCL, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. All right, what are we saying, fan zone? Help them out. Higher or lower? Oh, some are saying higher. You're saying higher. What do you think? Uh, higher. You want to say higher? It is. 20 sub appearances in a single season for Dominic Cavalloon. I make that that you've got four. Is that right? Four? Yes, four. Fantastic. Right, team number two, you've got four to beat to win a stadium tour for two people. All right, so for the final time this season in the fan zone, let's play higher or lower. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, Danny Kanamatri and Victor Anichibi. All right, 21. What do we think about Victor and Anichibi? Are we saying higher than 21 or lower? What are we saying, fans? Don't help the lads out. They're all saying higher, but it's up to you. Higher. You say higher as well, so we need it to be higher than 21. It is. 29 sub appearances, so you've got a point on the board. Are you relieved there? You didn't want to go home with zero. <laughs> Okay, Neil Mope, so sub appearances in a single season. Fan zone, help them out. What do you think? Higher or lower? Everyone's saying lower there. I think we might say lower as well. Lower. Lower. Let's see if it's lower than 29. It is 16. Okay, you have got two points on the board. Adamola Luckman, what do you think, fan zone? Higher or lower for Adamola Luckman? Oh, there's a lot of people saying higher. You say higher over there? Yeah, higher. They're saying higher. 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 You're saying higher as well. Let's see. Oh, just these are really close. Yes, 18 substitute appearances. You've got three points on the board. Yakubu! Oh, Yakubu! What do you reckon, fan zone? Higher or lower than 18? Higher, higher lower? Higher, you're, you're still saying higher. <laughs> You've got a 50-50 chance of being right. <laughs> Could have gone lower. What are you saying? We'll take lower. You're going to go lower than 18. Let's see. Oh, really close. 21 substitute appearances. Okay. James Beatty. What do we say, fan zone? Higher or lower? That's really tricky, that one. Higher. You're saying higher. You sure? Anyone else? Higher or lower? You're, oh, you've changed it on the last one. Lower. <laughs> what do you guys say? James Beatty saying higher or lower? Higher. Higher. Is it higher than 21? Let's have a look. Oh, you have got three points, but team number one, you got four points. So you have won a stadium tour for two people. Fantastic. Come here, though. I'm not going to send you home empty-handed. I've got a match day program for you. Thank you. Give the lads a big round of applause. Thank you so much for playing. And here you go. I've got a match day program for you two and a stadium tour for two people. Who's placed in the dressing room? There you go. Is that your mum taking a picture? Mum, mums always do that. <laughs> who's, who's placed in the changing room? Would you like to sit in and have your photograph taken? Grey. Jabari Grey. Uh, it won't be. And Alex Awobi, well, you can do that. Your voucher there for a stadium tour for two people here at Goodison is in there. Give them a round of applause, our winners today. Yay! Absolutely fantastic. Well, that is all we've got time for in the fan zone. If you are watching on Everton Live, stick with Sarah. She's got much more build-up for you from pitch side inside Goodison as she counts down to kick-off.
We know exactly what is at stake, don't we, fan zone today? This is one game. We have got to give it our all. We leave here with no regrets. You've all been amazing this season getting behind the lads. One more time, we're going to do it and stay up. Come on, you Blues. Thanks for your company this season. Take care. Thanks, Julia. Thanks to you guys in the fan zone. We hope you're enjoying the show so far. And as you can see, I'm stuck with Claire Wheeler. I'm going to be speaking to her in just a moment. But first, yesterday was a sad day for Everton, sad day for Everton women and for football, as the great Izzy Christensen retired and hung up her boots. Have a look at this. Fourteen years from the day that you first graced the pitch, your calling time in your career. A really tough decision, but one that I imagine that you've you put a lot of thought into. Yeah, it's um yeah, it's never easy. Um yeah, I've been around players, Everton players who've called time in their careers. Ingrid Mayfold, a good friend of mine, who 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 called time at thirty one quite recently, um with Everton and yeah, that's me now. Um it's not been an easy decision at all. It's been building for quite a while. Um, but yeah, I think all roads led to this decision when I was weighing up my options and um, yeah, looking, to be honest with you, I think I was just scared of making the right decision because I knew the right decision was to progress in other areas of my life. So um, yeah, I'm, I said to the girls and the staff this morning, I'm delighted, even though I'm maybe don't look it right now. I was pouring with tears when I told them but um, yeah no I said deep down I'm very very excited and I'm delighted that I've made a, a decision which I know is the correct one for my future. You know you've had a tra trophy lane you know career you know won trophies of course in England you went to France and were successful there individually and collectively what are you most proud of? Uh, th th there are many things that I am proud of but I think most of all just resilience um, showing resilience throughout my career, um, you know, dealing with setbacks. And I think that's something which here in society at the moment, I don't feel we are equipped and we're teaching kids to be resilient anymore. I think everybody wants instant success now. Everybody wants something really quickly. And I feel like you, you can't have that mentality if you want to be successful. I think you have to put hard yards in, um, whether that's in sport, studying whatever you have to put work in and I think once you've got a prolonged period of time when you've worked hard for something you'll be so surprised at what you can achieve um, so I think that that's probably been a story of my career um, resilience and I remember moving to Leon and you know it raised a few eyebrows like why sort of like as if like I mean I had a fantastic career at Manchester City and then it was like almost like another step upwards um, it raised eyebrows but I was like I need to prove people wrong um, and be resilient and deal with that environment and I loved every minute of it even if the minute was bad um, because I learned so much about myself um, and yeah having to 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 graft and, and to put work in. I think that's something which I've done since I came back here as well. I think, you know, one of my projects coming back here was, you know, break into the top four, four or five of, of the WSL, but also to move this team onwards and forwards and upwards. Um, and I feel like I've done that um, in terms of, you know, showing the younger players what hard work looks like and, you know, how to have consistent training, um, you know, habits and stuff like that. And, yeah, of course, there's been extremely difficult moments this season, last season and even the season before. And, um, but it wouldn't be football unless you have ups and downs. And um, I think to, to answer your question, it's just I feel like I'm most proud of being, you know, resilient. You know, the Women's Super League is, is continuing to grow and you've been a key part of that. I think this season you, you reach 150 WSL appearances. That must be immensely satisfying to know that as you hang up your boots you'll forever be remembered in the history books yeah no I mean it's a massive um, achievement I didn't know it was coming um, again probably like I said lost sight of the process a little bit myself and then to you know to have that um, milestone and to reach it and to pass the, the 150 mark there's some 
absolutely fantastic players in that cohort and they'll go on and be many, many players that that um, overtake me in that number in those history books. But I think for, for where the league started to where it is now, um, if, if somebody said to me you'd have got 150 league appearances, um, again, I probably would have laughed. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty proud of, of, of that as well. Just to sign off, what's next for Ezzy Christensen? What's, what's the next chapter? <laughs> Eat breakfast when I want. <laughs> <laughs> not not eat, worried eat about nutritionist. To, well, yeah, I always look after myself. But um, no, I think that it's going to be weird not having a life with a schedule. Um, that's something which, you know, I considered when I was making this decision. It's like, do you really want to step away from, like, the scheduled life? Because it's dead easy when somebody's telling you where to be, what to do, what to eat. Um, but no, I'm honestly, I'm so excited for what's next. Um, uh, the support I've had from family, friends, and my representatives, um, and and future employers at this time has been honestly I can't thank them enough for, for their support um, and the way they've they've helped me come to this decision without forcing me. You know, either way, um, they've created a really safe space for me to to discuss this. But what's next? Um, yeah, I'm super excited and can't really reveal much yet, but. Um, like I said, I'm just thrilled with it. I think it just got dusty out here, yeah. Izzy Christensen has bid farewell to her playing career. Claire, what's it been like to play alongside Izzy Christensen this season? Izzy has been such a role model for the game for so long and as a blue, she embodies everything that an Evertonian is. You know, she bleeds blue and she works hard and it, we're going to miss her next season. Really going to miss her. You've hit the nail on the head. She is a professional who, every time she pulls on that jersey, gives it absolutely everything. She carries herself incredibly on and off the pitch, and just a massive character, isn't it? She's, she, I'm sure she's going to go on to exciting things, but we'll, it's going to, it's going to leave a hole there, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. She's a leader among us, and she, like you said, she works hard. She leaves nothing in the tank, and you know she's had an amazing career and I'm just so happy for her and I can't wait to see what she does next. Absolutely well everyone at Everton Football Club wishes you the very best Izzy and we love you don't be a stranger make sure you're coming back um, but Claire to talk to you obviously you played Manchester City yesterday for the final game it was a narrow 3-2 defeat in the end but I think it's safe to say it was a really really strong performance from Everton how did it feel and the, the crowd the atmosphere the weather it was, a, it was actually a really great day all things considered. Yeah, I think all things considered, you know, we showed a lot of fight, um, you know, going down and then coming back in the way that we did. And I think it just shows in the season as a whole where we can get to next year. I think there's definitely a lot of positives and a lot of learning opportunities this season. And I think considering, you know, a new coach and a bunch of new players, I'm really excited to see now that we've had a whole season together, what we can do going forward. I'm so excited. And I remember, Claire, speaking to you here at the start of the season when we had the open training season, uh, open training session here in front of the park and there were so many fans here and I remember speaking to you that day and you were quite like overwhelmed by the support yeah. and I think it's only got bigger and better throughout the season hasn't it how's it felt to play in front of our Evertonians yeah no it feels amazing I think for me the number one memory I have is actually playing here at Goodison with the women and you know we got a high 20 I think 6,000 yeah. people come and watch us and you know it's such a big club and I can already see now there's Australian flags so yeah a few Aussie flags yeah. here yeah <laughs> it's a home away from home and I think the club is you know really behind women's football as well and it's, it gets behind the team no matter you know if we're losing winning it's all about supporting Everton and that's what we do definitely and you know it could be apt for a game like today you know sometimes things aren't going your way and it makes a difference as a player when the fans no matter what's happening in the game are right there with you how does it feel as a player does it give you that extra yard in you for sure I think definitely as a player um, you know playing here at Goodison I think the the crowds definitely feed off energy and I think if you give your all and you give 110 percent the fans respect that and that's what's expected as a player in my opinion absolutely and let's hope we'll see that today we've seen it from the women all season long and on women's football now the world cup is coming up and it just so happens to be in australia and new zealand how excited are you for your country to host the the ultimate women's football competition i think it's huge for the region to have the world cup down under it's going to be amazing you know i have memories of watching the world cup and i can wake up at like 3 a.m 4 a.m to watch it so for it to be on our time is going to be amazing um you know it's definitely going to be an adjustment for a lot of the girls who have to travel but it's going to be huge for football down there Massive. Well, we've had a lot of Aussies on this show and Everton fans that get up at mad times to watch football. So it would be nice to be on the other end of it and, and sort of see how that feels. Um, so we're so excited for the World Cup. And then, of course, after that, 
I know it's not he's got that first, but the season with Everton, we were chatting off air before, like something's building. We've had Brian come in, Stephen, loads of new players come in, and we finished six, which is no easy feat in the best league in the world. That feels like this is only going to get bigger and better next season. Yeah, no, I think they've done an amazing job in bringing a, a lot of people together in a short amount of time. And I think anyone who watches our games, they understand we have a style of play. And I think it's only going to build going forward. With more time um, and more caps and more minutes in this league, I think the group that we have, you know, we have one of the um, youngest average ages yeah. in the league. Um, and to come six with that, it just shows that where this team can go to in the future. So exciting. Yeah. And I can't wait. And I just want to say thank you for everything you've done for the club this season. It's been a pre pleasure to watch and a pleasure whenever I've had the uh, pleasure of interviewing you as well. So, no, honestly, you're, you're a little belter and you brought the flag and everything today. <laughs> so, Claire, we look forward to seeing you next season. All the best for the World Cup in Australia. Can't wait to watch that one. <laughs> but back to this game now. And here is Jordan Pickford. Jordan, the stakes could not be higher. So what is the approach from yourself and your Everton teammates? Yeah, I think we just need to work hard, you know, full commitment. You know, over the last few games, we've got some good results and nothing will change today. You know, the fans are going to be right behind us and it's about getting three points. How big a part of today's game is your mentality? Because that could change as well through the game when results or goals filter through from elsewhere. How tough have you got to be mentally? Yeah, you've just got to focus on, you know, it's hard, you, you're going to hear the noise, but you've just got to focus on yourself as a team, as a collective, and just focus on getting the job done for Everton. Um, and, you know, the, the noise is going to be there, but it's about us making our own noise on the pitch and getting three points. That noise you spoke of, can you try and channel that and not let it become too overwhelming, if you like? Yeah, just stay switched on on your individual job and you help your teammates out and just... Like you say, channeling it yourself and uh, it won't affect me and it'll just, you know, I'll be ready for it. All the very best to you. Thank you. Cheers. Jordan Pickford there and we are just going to do another recap of those two teams for you today for this massive, massive fight that's about to take place. So, of course, for Everton in goal, the man we've just heard from, Jordan Pickford. We've got number two, James Tarkowski. Number seven, Dwight McNeil. Eight, Amadou Anana. Number 11, Damari Gray. 13, and what will be his last game for Everton, Yerry Mina. Number 16, Abdoulaye Decore. 17, Alexander Awobi. 27, Adrissa Garnagay. Number 30, Connor Cody. And number 37, James Garner. The substitutes for Everton today are Begovic, Lonegren, Holgate, Keane, Mopay, McAllister, Sims, and Welch. And for Bournemouth today, we have Mark Travers, Lloyd Kelly, David Brooks, Jefferson Lerma, Dominic Solanke, Ryan Christie, Dango Oatara, Adam Smith, Marcus Sensei, Ilya Zavanyi, and Philip Billing as well on the bench for the Cherries. We have Randolph, Stevens, Cook, Metham, Stacey, Vinya, Moore, Anthony, and Sardi as well. And the referee today is Stuart Atwell. So those are your teams. Now let's hear from the manager. Sean, it looks like there's a potential change of formation. I would expect you to reveal that right now, but can you tell us how much it was your formation today based on who was available? Yeah, I mean, you'll see when the whistle blows, but we, we've got to put a team together. Um, we've stretched as we've been since we got here. We've never really had a truly fit squad and a balanced squad, um, but we are stretched. But on the other hand, we've got a team that we think can perform today and win. What do you think the approach is that you have to have to win today? I think it's finding that, one thing I talk about the players uh, a lot is about that framework which you need as a side, but the freedom to go and play. And I think, you know, awkward game obviously with a lot of noise around it and all that, but finding the balance, you know, the framework to go and defend properly, go and do the job, the tactical, but then the freedom to go and take on the challenge. How big a part is mentality, do you think, today? Well, that's been growing, so uh, I want to see that again today from the players. You saw it at Wolves, I'd never say die attitude. You know, there's been other games, Tottenham, I went to 10 men, got a, a late goal from Keno. You know, we want that attitude to, to be there for us. But it's not just about having a good attitude and motivation, it's about performances. We're looking for a performance. Also, as well, how much is it about focus? Because clearly news will filter in what's going on at other grounds. Yeah, that's right. But the, 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 you know, the argument is once they're out there to just focus on us. You know, you can't change everything around you. We can focus on us and change what we're doing, and that's what we're looking to do. Good luck to you, Sean. Thank you. And that's it. Sean Dyche, as you can hear, if you can even hear right now, this is the atmosphere. We know what this game means. It is absolutely massive. Let's get right behind the team and let's get this done. But just before we end, we know in all walks and areas of life, 
there is no room for racism. Now let's get into these and get it done. Come on, you blues. We'll see you next season. What does it mean to take the knee? Let's discuss some home truths. Racism isn't a comfortable conversation. But racism hasn't gone away. Racism is a real problem. It's societal. It's blatant prejudice. It's more than just social media abuse. It's certainly bigger than football. And this here is much more than just a gesture. It's about recognizing reality and demanding change. It's a symbol of pride, pride in identity, pride in using our platforms to change. That's what it means for players to take the lead. So if you're a supporter, support this.